Hey everyone, today we're going to go do some camping out in the woods at the giant propane tank camp. I just cleaned it up a few days ago. So it's getting a little late in the year, so we don't have many bugs, but I still want to try to give this stuff a try. I bought this earlier in the year on the discount shelf at Walmart, and it's supposed to make a nice smell when you throw it into your campfire. It may also be intended to burn just as itself. I believe this was going for like $20 at Walmart, but they had a whole pallet of them for like 2 or $3, just trying to get rid of them. So in here we got some camping stuff. We're going to grab a pillow. We're going to grab our thick mattress here. We don't need a sleeping bag. It's not cold enough out. Let's find a, what's the smallest tarp I have? Six... What is that, 9 by 11? Looks like I gotta buy more small tarps because that one's kinda big. We don't have a smaller one at the moment. All right, we're gonna pull down this tent. The thing about this tent is it's a summer tent, but I've only used it in the winter twice, and it did not hold heat very well. There we go, here's a smaller tarp. Go ahead, put this one away for a bigger winter camp. Well everyone, we're gonna head off into the woods now. Today feels pretty hot standing here in the sun because for the past week or so, it's been like 60 degrees. Yesterday was 58 degrees for the high and today it's finally up to about 80 degrees and sunny again. So let's head on off into the woods. Coming out here to our campsite between all the log piles. Look at the trees. We already got some fall colors. This is about all you'll see on my property. Although these trees will be turning, but most of mine are evergreen. Already got the nice fall colors. And today is the 30th of September. These also got some nice colors coming. This one will be bright in a couple weeks. So we continue down the trail, which is very lumpy and hard on the wagon. Instead of going down here to the bridge, we'll take this fork to the tank campsite. Right here on this bridge, I've been putting leftover food out here for quite a few weeks. Haven't seen the bear in months, which is a good thing. The only one we've been seeing on the trail camera is a moose and a raccoon that periodically comes by here, actually pretty regularly. All right, the wagon is not coming in here any further. Too lumpy. And other tip over obstacles. So this is the campsite we'll be using today. We got this old propane tank, which is gonna be good for cooking food. I'm gonna remove the cap and we'll put a grate on top of there. That and maybe we can cook up some things. We got a lot of kindling and stuff to burn. Look at all these piles here. You can just throw that in there. It'll burn fast, but that's okay. Just last week, back here, I went out with the chainsaw and made this nice flat spot for a tent, which was just covered in downed trees. Now we're ready to go.
right, everyone. What I just did right there made a huge difference. That big pile is just about gone now. With that big pile, seedlings can't grow. It's blocking all the sunlight. It's like gonna be a dead area for a very long time. But now doing that, next year seedlings can start growing out of there. And it's in tiny pieces now that can be collected and thrown in the wood stove. This white pine tree was pretty dangerous and dead, so I knocked that thing over about two years ago. Last year during a giant storm is when all these all over the woods just blew down. And we finally got this trail back open there. That goes down to the bridge I was just standing on over there. Nice flat area, soft with all the moss. I didn't pick this tree up because this tree is actually good to sit on in front of the fire. And it's also kind of like a trampoline. It did not lose its bounciness even after a couple years of drying out. So this is an old tank that came with the property and the company Amerigas did not want it back. So we made it into this. If you guys remember when we made it into this, it started off as being bright orange because I painted it to be a pumpkin that I put in the front yard for Halloween. Okay, today I'm going to be creating a wood stove for a campsite out of an old 100 gallon propane tank. I don't encourage anybody to try the following for themselves as it could be dangerous if there's enough fumes inside for an explosion. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get to the video. Hey everyone, today we have this propane cylinder and I'm going to be turning it into a wood burning stove. You might be asking why is it painted like that? That's because I used it as a Halloween decoration near the street last year. I have since painted over the face. You might be able to see it right here. The eyes. It was painted like a big pumpkin. Big jack-o'-lantern, basically. It's like a million degrees out today. Why was I wearing a hoodie? I'm sweating. But this thing feels so good being filled up with cold groundwater. It's so amazing. The thing is sweating. It's so freezing. That feels so nice. It's so cold. Look at it. Look at it. It's about to be a geyser of suds when the water gets up here. Water's almost up. It's spitting. It's going to start firing. Oh, oh. Here it comes. Look at that big snot going down the side of the tank. See, it's not a powerful drill. Usually when I would use a bit like this, it wouldn't jam like that. Almost big enough for the blade. All right, lesson learned. The blade with the teeth goes through it like butter. The one here, which is meant for black iron, not great for this. The water's acting like a lubricant. It's not cutting anything. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. Look at the suds that thing's making. These hostas right here are gonna love that drink. Here we go. That came out so awesome. Check out the inside before we do any more cutting. Oh, it's gonna make a whirlpool, yep. Love the echo inside this tank. Here we are at one of the campsites. Debris all over the ground. And it's all dead and dry. I can break it up, load that firebox, and light it up. This is the perfect fire NATO generator. Look at the flame going all the way up through the top. So awesome. With the exposure all the way down. Let's see if that looks any different from the top. Burning real nice. This paint will be off in no time. Look at those bubbles. Pretty cool, the pattern of how it's burning off. Now that's pretty awesome. We got bare steel underneath there. Now 
then we brought it out here and the paint all burned off it so inside we don't really have to clean it yeah you can even see the drain hole there's not much ash in there start it up we got the cap here we'll flick off and i have a nice grate we'll put on there maybe we can cook some hot dogs maybe we can fry up some things from the garden we can go pick that oh yeah i grew potatoes let's see if any of them actually happened we'll get a hoe out try getting them out of the ground maybe wrap them in an aluminum foil tonight throw them in there with all the ash Last year, I didn't do any summer camping on my property because it was just so dry and all this kindling is just a forest fire waiting to happen. This year has been nice and wet. It just rained all day yesterday. So no worries about the sparks that might fly out of this. Above us is a big white pine tree and I'm so happy because I remember when I was a kid, they used to produce so many pine cones that I'd rake them up with my dad and we'd throw them into a fire. But now I'm happy that they're making pine cones because that means little baby ones will be everywhere. Give it a couple years. The reason I'm so happy about it is because the last three years of drought, the trees literally didn't grow pine cones. Most of them haven't even fallen yet. This is a far view above the campsite. The rain this year has also really helped the moss. Last year, this campsite wasn't so mossy, and us treading on it just for a night isn't really going to do anything. If you look over here, it's so lush, green, and soft. If we pan over here at this old, rotten wood pile, look how vibrant and green that is. It's all just rotting it right away. And if you look in the background, see those two trees bent over? That was our camp last year. We camped underneath it like a little A-frame. That was pretty cool. Now let's start setting up that tent. All right, everyone, we got it all set up. I'll put the bedding in there in a few hours. It's not that late, we still got like nearly five hours of daylight. We gotta let that thing air out. The last time we used that was in the winter in the snow, and obviously it didn't dry completely. I can't believe it doesn't smell like mildew, it doesn't smell like anything in there, but it's damp. So that should dry off in a few hours, then I'll put everything in there. In the meantime, Let's see if we can collect some firewood. 
break it up and put it in the stove for later on. Just stuff it in the firebox. All right, everybody, I think that's enough for now. We got it stuffed in there pretty well, and we got so much material all over the ground. We'll focus on getting rid of these piles. Those will be gone fast if we keep with the fire for a few hours. Back here is a bunch of dry stuff that can be picked up. And to make it so much easier, here's what I did. I collected all the debris, not that, but this into a pile with the chainsaw, diced it, then the other way. And it just picks up into little squares you can throw right into the firebox door. It's not going to be windy tonight, so I'm not going to stake the tent down. Same thing with back here. This pile was huge before I diced it. Now this can all be cleaned up. The cool thing about this is, you saw how I was stuffing it way up inside it too? So this firebox is loaded up to about here. Once we start that and it starts getting air in there, It'll shoot flames for a little bit. I think that the tent is far enough away. Let's hope so. It might get a couple spark holes. So that's why we'll keep this top on for now so sparks can't shoot out. Then when it dies down, we'll put a grate so we can cook. Over here at some of our garden planters, those are the hot peppers. They just took off recently, but unfortunately next week we got some nights that are like 33 degrees. We might have a frost that kills all this, but I'll take you guys' advice. A lot of people in the comments said if you notice frost on your plants, water them immediately before the sun comes up, and it could save them. Over here, maybe we'll get lucky. The bell peppers, there's a couple baby ones in there starting. If they grow fast, then they'll be good this whole week. Temperatures or close to 80 degrees before that big frost. And look at this, there's a bumblebee right there pollinating. That looks really pretty. I don't think I've ever been stung by a bumblebee. I've accidentally stepped on their nest, but they're very gentle bees. A good amount of them chased me and they bit me, but they didn't sting me. That's the good thing about those guys. The leaves on all the trees are changing. Northern New England will be at peak probably in about two weeks, especially with all the cold weather expected. So anyone who's interested in leaf peeping, that's the time to do it. Around the 15th or a week earlier, or a week after, it'll be pretty good too, I imagine. Rhubarb plant, this tomato plant doesn't look like it's gonna grow tomatoes in time. So we got some nice rhubarb. Go ahead and cut a piece out of there. Cut it off into little pieces. Good but bitter, needs some sugar. All right, everyone, I got the hoe out. This is where I planted my potatoes. Those plants died over a month ago. Let's see if there's any potatoes actually under here. They didn't seem to do very well, but maybe. Ah! Oh, look at that, we got a red potato! Oh wow, we got a bunch of little potatoes in there! Yeah! So 
so we at least got something out of here. See this right here got hit by the hoe. This one here looks like it was rotting before I even found it. Yeah, that smells disgusting. That's rotting. But some of these look okay to eat. We'll bring them in and wash them. We even got these, these tiny little ones that didn't get time to develop. I also planted some potatoes right here in the aisle. Let's tear this up between that marigold and the strawberry plant. I planted a row of them. Also back there, let's try digging where I planted the onions to see if anything developed. Unfortunately, I wasn't quick enough with most of the broccoli. You see, once it flowers, it's not the best thing to eat anymore. It doesn't taste as good. But back there, we still got a few good ones. Maybe we can cut those off. The pollinators sure love broccoli flowers. Haha, <laughs> just starting my trench. We already found one, look. Oh, that's perfect. It's a purple potato. Look at that. It's okay, I can wash it, I don't care. It's, it's cut in half. These ones are, they look a lot more healthy. So this is where we're starting our trench. And then I, now I'm gonna pull back so no more will get cut in half. Maybe they just did way better because this was actually being watered every day by the sprinkler. Still got a ton of tomatoes in here growing. I just tore up the ground and the potatoes in here seem to fare a lot better. Look at this. Got a good amount of them. I found two onions. Tiny little things though. They didn't get much time to develop. Actually three of them. One of them is cut in half. Potatoes did a bit better in here, yeah. I gave up on looking for more of these. Dug up the whole area, that's all I could find. And we still got, these are the big beef tomatoes. Morrow Globe back there did really well. ton of carrots. Alright everyone, here's what we brought inside. Let's just go ahead and clean these up a bit. All the ones with broken parts from hitting it while getting them out of the ground. We'll definitely eat these ones today. And the rest of them, potatoes keep a pretty long time. Before last year, I didn't even know that a purple potato was a thing. This one's like really hard. It looks like scales. So I wonder how that one's gonna go. Actually, it might just be that type because all the white ones appear to be, or maybe the white ones were the first plants to die and they're starting to shrivel up. Maybe that's why they feel a little hard. Got a tomato. The first piece of corn that we broke off all year, I don't think, it, it's obviously not as big as it would get, but I brought it in because I'm very curious how the corn's doing. Also, when I broke it off, that was not a good sign. Yeah, it's not done. Look, it's, it's not ready to eat. Although, it still smells good. I'll, I'll try to eat it. Yeah, honestly, this might be fine. I was having a debate a while ago in my comment section. Is baby corn just normal corn that hasn't developed? A lot of people said yes, some said no. But this actually is like halfway in between. It smells okay. We'll put it in our frying pan tonight. Yeah. And right here we got our broccoli. More broccoli. More broccoli. We got our carrots. See, look how weirdly shaped they are. Because when they grow, if they hit like a rock, it tries to go around it. Did you know that most carrots in the United States get wasted because of this? People won't buy them, so the farmers end up using them as animal feed or grinding them up into fertilizer. 
But ever since the baby carrot came out as a thing, that really helped with waste because they just cut off all the undesirable parts to make it into a baby carrot. This one split, maybe it grew too fast. That's okay, this is one of the better shaped ones overall. We'll just cut around that crack. All right, everyone, we actually grew a good amount of them. Look at that. Good amount of different colored potatoes. Now, I only picked a couple of the tomatoes. If I picked them all, it would fill half the sink with the ripe ones right now. I had the big ones, at least. If I picked everything ripe, it'd overflow the sink, probably. I took all the broccoli that looked appropriate to eat. Got a good amount of carrots, and obviously we're just going to eat a small fraction of this tonight, but... The good news is things like carrots and potatoes, they can, potatoes keep for a long time just in the room. Carrots last a bit longer in the fridge, it appears. So let's bring outside what we're going to plan on eating tonight. So tonight I'm going to eat that. We're going to take all the potatoes that I scored with the hoe because those will start rotting immediately and any other ones with nicks or dents gotta eat them before they go bad we'll eat a tomato tonight I've gotta eat that it'll be like baby corn we can fry up all the broccolis today um, baby tomatoes I can just munch them right down we'll eat a couple of the carrots if you guys saw my video of feeding a bunch of my garden to the tortoise, we'll probably do that again. He'll eat a good dent of it. Alright, I think all the other potatoes are good. And look down here inside the drain. Look how small this potato is. It didn't get time to develop. Teeny thing. And right here we've got some onion. I cleaned it up nicely so we can throw that into the pan for some good flavoring. And... I think that's it for today. I accidentally brought inside a rock. I'm letting the sprinkler run for a little bit, just trying to extend the garden's life just a tiny bit. I just checked the forecast. We have a day next week. It's going to get down to 31 at night, so that might put an end to the garden, unfortunately. I'm hoping we get at least a couple more weeks, though. I can certainly feel it. The days are getting shorter fast. It'll be dark in less than two hours. It now gets dark at about 6.30. That's three hours less at night than it was back in the summer. So I got some cardboard in here. We're gonna go ahead and fire the stove up. And I brought out everything I think I would need for tonight. Brought a cutting board, knives, forks, a bunch of little pans, butter to put in the pan, my pot holder, and a drink. Let's go fire this thing up. I think I have a lighter out here already. That's the grate we'll put on top of it once it's heated up. Yep, there's two lighters in here from the last time I had a fire out here, but this is the first time I've ever actually slept out here. All right, everyone, time to try firing this up. Hopefully the stuff in there is dry enough that a couple cardboard boxes will do the job. If not, there's a sheet of birch bark in the woods I actually forgot about. Oh no, there's actually mosquitoes out here. I didn't think there was going to be a problem today. Now that it's starting to get dim out, the mosquitoes are going after me. We'll grab some citronella candles. I have a whole bunch of them from our pallet camp. Yeah, that's just not catching even the cardboard. Let's go find some birch bark. Birch bark works great for starting fires. Yeah, 
Yeah, see? It's covered in oil. It's very flammable birch bark. Great for starting fires. Even when it's wet, it burns hot. You want to try to... Because this is many different layers. You want to have it as thin as possible. This bark is kind of old. The fresher it is, the better it burns. That should catch everything in there. Real nice. I'm pretty sure that is more than enough to get this thing burning nice and hot. We'll put this off to the side for next time. Time to sit back and relax, watch the fire. It's already burning really, really hot. Burning pretty clean so far. This is very thick metal. Can't even feel any heat yet. Got flames coming all the way up top. And the flames are only going to keep growing. I don't think this is going to go out. I think we're good. Is that going to fall out? That might fall out, that piece. we got to go search for a good poker stick. Maybe right there on the ground. I love this stove. It acts like a turbo, so just like in the, earlier in the video I showed you the fire NATO we made in there, the way it sucks air, like a tornado around in there, it's like a turbocharger. It helps it burn cleaner with a lot less smoke than there typically would be without the tank. Started off as a huge wick, but just gave it a few minutes. They're starting to perk back up. We got three of these candles here, and it's nice and still out. Hopefully that keeps the mosquitoes away. Still burning really nice in here. It's been going almost 15 minutes. Look at lots of big flames coming out the top. Once this thing starts to cool down a little bit, we'll knock that off. We'll put the grate up there, and we'll start cooking some food. In the meantime, let's get out the cutting board and start cutting up some of these vegetables. Pine trees and fir trees produce sap to protect themselves against bugs. Except when there's a drought. This year, there's been a lot of rain, so the trees are healthy, dripping sap all over themselves, down onto the stove, and as it's heating up, look at it melting and burning. I also got my butt covered in it, and it's not from this tree. It's from the big one above me, dripping all over the campsite. It's now been about 25 minutes. The fire's not as big, but it's a lot hotter here because that thick metal tank is now completely heated up. It's radiating all the way back here. I'd say I got almost six feet from where I'm sitting. My legs are hot. It's probably going to melt a lot of the wax in that candle, you know, but that's actually a good thing. You see, a lot of people will take a candle like this and they'll blow it out. Then they'll light it again and it starts digging a hole. You want the whole surface of it to become melted before you blow it out and then it'll just outright last longer. Yeah, look, the side towards the stove is starting to melt on the edge, if you can see that. 
only this side because of all the heat. Yeah, it's, I realize that over the years, it's very wasteful if you keep blowing a candle out because it'll build up along the edges. And then someday, those flames, when they're down in a hole and it's actually a hot day, it could melt the sides and then just smother it and just ruin the candle. I don't know how, but I'm getting sap all over myself. I think it's literally dripping on me right now. Butter's actually melting from the fire. This is like one of the juiciest potatoes I've ever eaten. Look at how it's just leaking all over the place. It's because we just pulled it out of the ground. Although it wasn't growing anymore, it's kind of like in hibernation, it's very juicy. So we're gonna put that into one little pot. Right there. Gonna reach on in here and get some onion. Wanna mix some onion in there for some flavoring. Just gotta peel off the skin a little bit. Peel off it, yeah. Get a good amount of it off. Drop that on the ground. We don't have much onion, but Maybe it'll be enough to just season it. And this, we got this other one right here, which is absolutely tiny. All right, everyone, that looks pretty tasty. The rest of that I'll go back in the house and maybe get used another day. So right there, we got the broccoli. I know you're supposed to boil it or steam it, but we'll just see how it cooks in a lot of butter. Right there, there's butter in the bottom of that. That one there actually has a cover, so it'll kind of steam it. And right here, we have zucchini. We'll keep moving around with a bunch of butter in there. Hopefully that comes out good. I wonder if we'll attract any animal with all our food scraps. But like I said, I haven't seen the bear in a while. So hopefully we don't run into a problem. Plus, I don't know if the bear would come near me if he knew we were out here. But I'm sure the raccoon will maybe come by in the middle of the night. We've been seeing them. Now this is extremely hot. There's not many coals now, so how we're doing up top? All right, I think that's perfect to cook. I can't put my hand over it. All right, we gotta get that off. That's extremely hot and I don't want to touch it with the pot holder because it is very dirty, this thing. Let's just flick it off. Nothing on the ground behind it. Boom. That thing is burning hot. Now let's get this up here so we can put our pans up there. Nice. We don't need that thing anymore to protect against sparks because we're not loading it with any wood at the moment until we're done cooking this. Now that's one thing we don't want to fall face first into. And we'll check on that in a little bit. Probably don't even want to leave the 
plastic step stool next to it. Very hot. Now, it's been many hours. I'm sure the tent is done drying, so let's get our bedding in there for the night. Already starting to sizzle, so, so it doesn't burn. Let's quickly make up our bedroom. Bed sheet, blanket. Put this inside the porch. When we're done cooking for the night, we'll try a citronella log and see how they do. Get the pillow in there and the mattress. Nice. Maybe I'll make that up after dinner because I don't want to risk burning it. Things are starting to sizzle. Butter is starting to melt. Put my hand over the top of this. It's blasting so hard, the exhaust coming out of this thing. And I think maybe we should go and throw a few more things in there. Just a little bit. Slug. There it goes, it's finally combusting. We'll get a quick burst of heat, and then I'll keep slowly feeding little twigs in there because I don't want the fire to reach all the way up to the top and burn the food, although it might, just that little bit I put in there. All right, probably should have brought a fork to stir. None of this is even close to being done. It's going to be a while. I should stir it. Move everything around. Look, since I even got up here, you can see it's starting to boil more. Back with a fork. Let's go stir it. There's so much exhaust coming out of here that it's actually hard to reach over the top of that. The exhaust is so hot. This broccoli, is that almost done? I've never actually cooked fresh broccoli before. How fast does that cook? I don't know. Should have brought my pot holder too. Although it's not horrible yet. I see I gotta stir because it looks like the corn and stuff on the edges is burning despite the butter in there. It's gonna move that around. This one's probably gonna take a while to cook. That's why I put it in here. The stuff I assumed would take longest to cook, I wanted it with a cover so it could kind of like steam itself but, you know, sometimes a little bit of burnt on the edges actually tastes good. And those are going to shrink. So, yeah, the cover didn't fit at all before. Now it fits a lot better. Let's go ahead and flip our zucchinis. Wow, those are going to be done probably fast. Seems like it. Got to get underneath them and flip them. And I got enough zucchini. I could probably do two, three more batches if I'm hungry enough. I'll just put a piece of uh, aluminum foil over the re S the, end of the, the end of the zucchini and I can do it another day in the house if I choose. Let's get that back over the heat. Time to go do a check. It's been another five minutes or so. Climb back up. Make sure that, nope, the stool's not getting too hot. Now that broccoli, I might be overcooking parts of it. I think that broccoli might be done to eat, huh? No, still a little hard, especially the big part, obviously. Let's try sticking it. Yeah, give me give it five more minutes and I'll eat it, even though it's becoming a little mushified. This stuff here is not burning, which is good. It still needs some time and some flipping. 
what I'm realizing now with this, I think we're cooking a little too slow. Oh, the, this, this stuff is starting to slightly become a little mushy and becoming nice and cooked. It's also shrinking a lot. So I think what we got to do is we got to keep this thing firing a little bit hotter. And then this will be the first thing I'm about to eat. Waiting for it to combust again. It's heating up. And it combusted. Look at that. Boom. Big flames. Instant heat. And the smoke is already reducing from it. One minute later, boom. Look at all that heat. Let's pull this thing back up. And we're going to take the broccoli off it now. And that'll be the first thing we eat. The rest of it's still going to need quite a bunch of time. Look at all that boiling of the butter going on. Awesome pull this thing off now and while I'm waiting for the broccoli to cool down for just a couple minutes I'm gonna go ahead and while well, that does smell good I'm gonna go ahead and give the zucchini and other stuff one more stir we got an inferno going right now look down inside there whoa that was hot it's very hot putting my hand anywhere near the exhaust very hot Zucchini looks like it's almost done too. Oh, look at that. Nice crispiness. Good thing I came up here to give it a good stir around. That char right there actually adds a lot of flavor in my opinion. I love that. See, it's becoming nice and soft. Yeah, literally this is going to be done in like five minutes. Less maybe. It's already nice and tender. Did you hear that awesome Jake break in the background? All right, throw that guy back out there. Oh, it's very hot back out there for just a minute and this right here okay right here it is the potatoes and carrots are starting to become soft enough to be able to poke but not even close that might need a lot more substantial time put it back out there onto the heat we'll grab that one in literally like a minute all right those are nice and cool now let's reach up hot these are cooked now that other stuff be done maybe a little bit longer but that's good i like i don't like my stuff all done at once it'll get cold before i'm done eating everything pull up my chair sit down eat in front of the nice fire looks good broccoli mm. That's so good. That big piece still had some crunch, but I liked it. Now the other stuff. That is so awesome, cooking it in butter instead of frying it with or uh, steaming it. I can't believe how delicious that tastes. And it being a little bit burnt added good flavor. Oh, that's also what it is. It's smoke flavor too from the stove. Great. Oh. That piece was literally crunchy and completely burnt. Stay away from the very edges. That tastes so delicious, but I do not like the crunchy parts. It tastes like, or it, it feels like I'm crunching grass that's been baking in the hot summer. Now the zucchini, that, that looks like it's absolutely perfect though. Really, really hot. really really hot but I've never had any of these things smoked before the flavor is incredible I 
I gotta let that cool, it's still way too hot. While waiting for it to cool, I just threw a whole bunch more wood in there. The moss is so nice here. Blueberry bushes. This is where we camped back in the middle of the winter. We made these two trees into a giant tent. All right, now that is just about cool enough to eat. It's been another five or so minutes. I went up here again to stir it, and I'm now noticing it's good to eat. The potatoes are a little too soft, but the carrots are perfect, and the corn, I'm kind of unsure about it. Now we'll let that cool down for maybe 10 minutes or so, then we'll go ahead and eat that. Now the fire, I threw a bunch in so it won't go out. Then in a few minutes, I'm gonna load it with a whole ton of stuff, big stuff, maybe even a couple of those logs that are naturally split from the tree falling over get this thing really hot real good hot coals then we're going to wrap a few of the bigger potatoes in aluminum foil throw them in the ash wait like an hour and it'll be yummy time to eat awesome now I can finally eat it without going because it's so hot. But I love it, the flavor of the smoke and pepper, it's awesome. This came out perfect on the stove. Now this had a cover so it probably won't be as smoky. Let's give it a try. So this is not baby corn, it's maybe medium corn, it's like half grown. And we're going to eat the whole cob, how's that going to be? I can see it steaming, it's really hot. Awesome! I love it. And what I like is on my corn patch, the ones that are away from the sun are less developed. So I'm going to go pick some baby corn, that'll be awesome for tomorrow. Look at this, we got a homegrown carrot. Actually, the first one I'm personally eating. I gave like dozens of them to my friend's tortoise, but I didn't eat one yet. Purple potato. Awesome. Get some onion in there. This is a really good concoction we got. Now that's literally like baby corn. The really the tip of it. I gotta let that cool down maybe with 10 more minutes. I struggled to eat those couple pieces. I'm burning my mouth. Yeah, we're going to walk back here now and grab, this is naturally split by the tree falling over. I want to grab all these big pieces. Look at it all. Wow, there's so much of it in here. I'm going to throw it all into the wood stove. All these split pieces, it'll get some real good hot coals going. And then we can try doing some potatoes. I can break that piece off. 
Look at this, this ultra fine powder. It actually feels soft. Look at that. Maybe that's the remains of what the carpenter ants did, I'm thinking. And this stuff is dry as a sponge. This is gonna catch so fast, all these pieces. Throw in some big stuff, get some good coals that'll stay hot in there for hours. Once all that stuff burns down, give it like an hour. Sometimes these rotten uh, wood piles out here, if it had a good dry day, you'll find one that feels kind of light. I'm not gonna split it. Let's just try to jam it in there. This thing will smolder in there all night. Try to get it in that hole. There we go, right up on top. It should be nice and cool now. Look at this. There's a friend coming over. It smells our food. Oh, running away. Running away. That guy smells our food. It's been almost another hour since we had that food. It's starting to get dark, and now it's time for a second course of food. So, what I got right here, I'm just gonna make one burger. I don't have any burger buns. We'll just cut it in half and fit it into these. They're uh, nine days expired, but that, no, ten days expired, but that's okay. Now, this is fine. We're just gonna reuse this right here. Actually, this one on the bottom right there, it's already nice and buttered up, so the patty won't stick to it. So, just peel that off. And we're gonna start up our burger up on the top here we go wow there's a lot of heat coming off of there it's not insanely hot I can keep my hand there for a few seconds so it'll like slow cook it which is really awesome it won't burn don't, don't really have to keep an eye on it we got some nice hot coals going in there now so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up these potatoes in aluminum foil I'm gonna put a little piece of butter inside each one to try to lubricate it so it doesn't burn as much also, yeah, because once this melts, it'll start bubbling up. It should get all over it nice. It'll also make it so the aluminum doesn't stick to it. When you make a potato in a campfire, you expect it to come out burnt and crispy on the edges. You cut it open and you eat it out with a spoon. And we got one that's cut in half. That was literally cut in half with the hoe. And this one got nicked by the hoe. So let's go ahead and wrap them up. I'm going to wrap them nice and tight, maybe double layer them so better chance of not burning and we'll throw them in the fire these are fairly small ones so we might not need a full hour gonna wrap them up and we're gonna throw them all in different corners of the fire so if one of them's destroyed maybe another one will have a better chance you know what i mean Forgot to put the butter in there. Gotta open them back up. Ah, mosquito. Now, this is going at a pretty slow cook. I can hear the hamburger up top sizzling nice, slow cooking nice. So this will be slow cooking for a while. Let's throw our potatoes right into the hot areas that I can see. And then when all this stuff is burned down, we'll have to sift through it and get them out. Oops. Caught that one. Only one of those plates was dirty. 
the sun is setting. The sky is that weird color because there's so much wildfire smoke again today. We had a few weeks where we didn't have any, but the majority of the summer was smoggy out like this. Looks like it's just about ready to flip. That's cooking faster than expected, huh? We gotta flip this guy over. Awesome, not burned at all, slow cooking. Nice, and I bet that'll be so good in that veggie juice and butter. The sun is going down. Let's get our food off of here. It's gotta be done by now. It's been slow cooking for a while, so it's not burnt. And that's gonna be tasty, I bet. All righty. That plate just caught on fire after all this time. Can you guys hear that? Listen. Woodworm eating this tree. Get a hot dog bun out. It doesn't feel stale or anything, even though it's pretty old. Go ahead and cut this in half. Lots of butter. Get that in there. And we'll just have our burger like that. Nothing wrong with that. And these, because they're getting kind of old, I'll probably give these to that squirrel. But I'm going to go put them a bit away from the campsite just in case of a bear. Although, bears have a nose that's ten times better than a dog. And I've literally seen it for myself. So, I went a long time without a bear going in my garbage cans. Then, I put a certain something out way out in the woods. That one day, my garbage cans got thrown apart because the bear was able to track the smell all the way back to where I threw the wrapper out. Yummy. Alright, I bet most people would really like this, but the weird buttery vegetable taste that's now permeated into the burger, it's not the worst thing, but it's weird. Ooh, a spider friend is trying to come over here and eat some of this. That's a really, really tiny spider friend. It's almost completely dark now. How do we think those potatoes are doing? Well, we're going to test one of them in a moment. And it's finally dark enough that we gotta start using lights. So, this is what I got to get the potato out of the fire. It was longer, but I wanted to make this cool noise and I broke it by doing this. Let's see if we can stick one of them. Let's see if it's soft, any of them. Oh, they're all gonna be cooked, I bet. Look at that. We stuck right through it so easily. So that means they're gonna be good. Just piercing it, it smells really good piercing it because of the butter inside it. Let's see if we can get the rest out, see if they're all easy too. There's four of them, but I only see two more. Where did I throw one of them? Oh wow, it went right through it. Yeah, they're gonna be nice. I bet they're not gonna be burnt much either. I've had ones in ultra hot fires that it literally melted the aluminum off them. Not today. Well, I spoke too soon. This one, if you can see, it's partially melted. But that's okay, we're not eating the edges. I expect it to be pretty burnt. Now, where's the other one? Oh, I see it way back there. Ouch. It might be that one I just pulled out. It's one of them I can smell burning. Ah, it's really hot. I can't reach in there. Uh, we may have just doomed it. 
How are we going to get it out? It's buried. Number three is a goner, but it was also pretty melted. It would have been messed up. It was small. Let's see how they turned out. They're very hot. Let's peel it open. And it's not as tightly packed because they shrunk in there. Yeah, it's leaking butter. I can smell it. Not that bad, I've seen way worse. Look at that. Can't wait to cut it open and see what it looks like. I think double wrapping them helped a good amount. Ouch, very hot, it's leaking butter. Scolding hot butter's coming out of there. That one right there is like really mushy. It's basically mashed potatoes. Oh, look at this one falling apart. You see that? Pieces of aluminum all over my hands. It's just really falling apart, this one. This one is burnt to a crisp. It's like a hard shell, but you might still get a bite out of it. Let's go ahead and cut it open. Yeah, look, you can stick a spoon in there. It's still nice. There's just a hard shell like an egg. It's still edible. This one is really tender. It didn't burn at all. I can eat every part of this one. This big one is also very similar. Only one side of it got really burnt, so yeah, I'm gonna let that stuff cool down for like 10 minutes, and then I can eat it out with the spoon. Yeah, so that one was like flaking little pieces of aluminum off it. So now that they're sitting in some of that, I might just eat what's in it, even though the skin is technically okay. That one got burnt to a crisp. It's all about where they are in the fire. Clean up all the aluminum. put it into a nice tight ball that we can just throw in the recycling bin and the skewers we're not gonna eat anything like hot dogs we can throw them right on in there it's broken anyways they're disposable all right so check this out everybody we're gonna try using one of the citronella logs now we're gonna try throwing it in there it says it'll burn up to three hours you see, it says just loosen it. That means if this has been sitting around, especially in a hot place, it might be stuck to the wrapper, I guess it's saying. But it looks like, yeah, you're not going to remove this piece of paper around there, right? Yeah. And it says to light here, but we obviously don't need to light the paper. We're just going to throw it in the fire. So up to three hours. And I also thought it was weird. It says right here that air quality advisory, November through February. Some places it, it's apparently illegal to burn this in the winter. And I don't know why you'd want to use it in the winter. It's for mosquitoes. But I guess it, it'll make the area smell real good. So we'll throw one in there and we'll save the rest for another day. So, it says to put it on an elevated platform, which we don't have, but I guess that's kind of elevated. Let's throw it in there like that. This is not the way you're supposed to burn it, but I'm sure it'll make the area smell real good. We'll check back on this guy in a little bit. It's really flaring up. It says it's made out of biomass, such as sawdust and tree nutshells. Now it's time to try out these potatoes. First... The very burnt one. Let's eat the insides of it. Oh, you're only going to get like a bite. Not bad. The butter permeated into it, which is good. A little burnt. Let's try the red one. Still pretty hot. Perfect. The white one. Could be cooked a little more, but not bad. Oops. Yeah, they all came out pretty good. It wasn't a very high intensity fire. Just under an hour, cooked them all pretty nice. 
less than five minutes in, it's really flaring up. It's producing a ton of heat. And this reminds me of back in the day, like these days, you have a road flare, you strike it like a match, and then you put it in the road, it burns for what, 20, 30 minutes in the road, a road flare. But back in the day, I even did a video on it. I bought a road flare back from the 1940s. Back then, it didn't run like a torch like it does today. It was literally like this, a little chunk of oily mass that you just leave in the road. We burned one on my other channel because I wanted to test out a, I think it was a 90 year old road flare. Look at the tent, That the fluorescent parts look cool. I can see it better with the naked eye than the camera can. Oh, there you go. It's fluorescent, those cords. I, I guess that's so when you're walking around at night with a flashlight, you don't trip over the wires in case it's windy. Those are suspension wires. Now up top here, let's just wave a little of that smoke in my face. I want to know what it smells like. I smell zero citronella coming out of there. Maybe we'll check back in a few minutes and see what it's doing. Got the cicada. Or is that a Katie did? Loud. With a lot of pretty flowers. These ones are past peak. And who do we got there? An earwig. I saw a lot of them in my corn earlier. They supposedly don't cause damage though. All right, coming back after about 20 minutes. How is that thing gonna look? It's creating huge flames. I smell citronella, but I suspect it's just from the candles, because if I reach up here and, yeah, I don't smell anything but the wood. Maybe if it was just that burning and no wood, then we'd have something. You see how fast the smoke's coming out? I love how this thing burns like a turbo. Barely anything burned in the past 20 minutes, so that will probably go on for hours, and it'll also help burn that giant log behind it. I'm curious to see how long it'll take for it to burn. We started it at like a minute or two after seven, so pretty easy to keep track of that time. Very curious to see how long will this thing burn for. We will find out. On the highway, like, 50 motorcycles just went by at once. I was thinking to myself, why does traffic feel so loud today? Usually, traffic's not that bad at this hour for the highway near the house. It's because it's a Saturday night and it's warm. It's nice, so tons of tourists are up. That's what it is. Go ahead, take my shoes off. I'm gonna go inside the tent now. Just wanna get everything straightened out, figure out how I wanna sleep in here tonight. Make the bed a bit. Yeah, everything dried out. Now I can go ahead and shut the windows if I want. It, Cause it, tonight it's supposed to get pretty chilly. It's supposed to be like 40, get down pretty good. Now outside it's still pretty warm, so. Leave it open for now. Got my blanket. I got my bed sheet here. Get all this stuff on the bed. This is a really small mattress from a hospital cot, but a twin size mattress fits around it pretty nice. I use this thing because it's made out of plastic. You can clean mud off it. It doesn't get wet, and it's pretty thick, so if there's any rocks or anything underneath, if I didn't do a good job picking up before making the camp, then that's good. But obviously, if we were to go on backpacking trip or somewhere far, I wouldn't bring this, but I've even brought this on my toboggan miles and miles into the woods to camp before. It's always worked out. 
Yeah, let's shut them. We'll just leave the... We'll leave th this door wide open and we'll just shut the screen in the porch. Because you see, this tent is cool because it's got like a porch area. You can leave your boots, leave things you don't want in there with you. And then we'll just shut the screen now. I actually left this thing open all day. But... If they were going to get in, the bugs probably just followed me in with the light. But the good thing is, this time of year, there's not many bugs. And when we do get down to that temperature tonight, mosquitoes are uncomfortable. They won't even bite you. Just give it a few hours. The temperature will drop enough. The mosquitoes won't even be comfortable. So the citronella candles won't even be needed anymore. This year has been so cool that the mosquitoes, I never really complained about them this year. There has, hasn't been many warm nights. Still going strong. Now that the edges appear to be crisping up, the flames might not be as big, but it's still extremely hot in there. I didn't touch it. It just shifted and it just flared up like crazy from it knocking some of the ash off. I guess the oils couldn't get out of it as much, but now it like kind of busted itself open. The moon is very bright again. It's not that high in the sky yet, but it will be. It's not quite a full moon, but all week it's been very bright where you can walk around without flashlights. The temperature is now dropping a good bit. It's now about 55. Earlier it was 80. Still got the candles going. Now, I told you guys it wasn't normal circumstances, this thing. That thing was supposed to be in there burning by itself, but it only lasted about maybe an hour or so. Because what time is it now? No, it, no, actually it lasted closer to 90 minutes, but now it's completely gone, and all that's in there now smoldering is that whole log. So I think we'll maybe throw some more wood on, catch it up again. Because that'll combust. That's hot. It'll probably smoke for a good while, but eventually it'll just go poof. Or if I just let it sit and heat up for a while, then I just give it a quick light. It'll go poof. This thing is very hot. This tank still very, very hot. Usually around here, we just have a problem with earwigs in the spring, but there was just one on my tripod. They climb up on everything. They get into everything. I've even woken up to some of them crawling on me way back in the day before I knew to spray the house for them. Because in the spring, there'd be times, well, in the day, they're not around, but as soon as the, it starts getting dark, that's when they start walking around, they would make their way into food containers. Anything that wasn't sealed, they'd find it, and they'd eat it. They'd steal peanut butter off of mouse traps. They'll go after anything. But... Just a baseboard perimeter spray. Kept them out of the building for years. I've never noticed an uptick of them in the fall before, but we have that right now. Let's throw some more firewood in and see if it catches back up quickly. We got that thing raging again in only eight minutes. I loaded it back up, blew on it, and it ignited immediately. You saw how much it was smoking just a minute ago? It's just about stopped now, because once this thing kicks in and starts pulling air, 
I love how it circulates in there. It just starts running like a jet. And look at that, there's flames now coming out of it. That's kind of cool. Burning real hot. It's like a big torch. And because it's burning like that, the smoke is now 100% gone. Wow, nothing is coming out of there anymore. It's just burning so clean now that it's sucking all that air. This spot would be awesome for winter camping because this thing is, it just sends heat out so far and this thing doesn't spark much. It's awesome. It's nice and contained. It's like a massive rocket stove. Everything we just put in there burned away in like 10 minutes down to basically nothing. You need big logs to have coals that'll stay all night. This whole thing will be cold to the touch if I leave it for like an hour or so. Maybe not an hour, but quickly. And if we just walk over here away from the lights for a minute, you can see the very big bright moon over there. I wonder if this is that slug that I threw off the piece of wood earlier before throwing it in the fire. Those candles do propel a lot of light against the trees. Looks kind of cool. It's so quiet out now. It's about 11 o'clock at night. The moon has now moved over here instead of over here. It's so quiet. I maybe hear a car go by on the highway every 20 minutes now instead of nonstop like earlier. We come over here to the fire pit. We look in there. You can still see a little bit of glowing. That log is still smoking a little bit. If I stick the camera inside here, still a little bit warm, but that thing's just about out. We'll fire it back up in the morning because we're gonna cook breakfast on it. I like these candles. I, maybe it's just because it's cold out, or I guess the candle's wick ratio isn't set up right, if you know what I mean. Because these things, it's wasting a lot of wax. See how it can't melt all the edges? Like I said earlier, that wax around the edges will never melt. Maybe it's because it's kind of chilly out, but the thing that happens is if you try to start these up in the summer on a really hot day, the sides that are way above the wick can melt in there and smother everything out. And look at that mosquito. That mosquito had a crash landing in there. <sighs> Blow them all out. We're going to go for a little walk. <sighs> we'll cover them up when we get back. Amazingly, there's no mosquito larva in here. Nope. <sighs> all right, we're going to go take a little walk out in the woods. Got a bright moon up there. Everyone knows that I don't get cold that easily. And it's not that bad out. But I am wearing a hoodie because I know that tonight it'll get down to about 40 degrees. It'll get pretty chilly. Right now it's maybe about 52 degrees outside. Last time I checked. When it's this quiet out in the woods, you can hear absolutely everything. I don't know what the microphone's picking up, but all I can hear right now is my clock ticking. I can hear far in the distance water trickling. And there's something walking in the woods, I'd say, within a hundred feet. The thing about the woods is there's dry leaves and little twigs all over the ground, so you can't really tell if it's something huge or just a mouse jumping through the leaves. You can never really tell. But who knows what we might run into 
as far as a friend out on the trail. Haven't seen the bear in a while. Although if that is the bear walking around out here with me, he's gonna run away. Oh, here comes a car. It's been a while. Is it too chilly for things like frogs? Oh, I see water beetles and a whole ton of mosquito larvae in here. Where are the frogs? Where are the... Um water skimmers. Those are the ones who eat the mosquitoes. I saw some frogs tonight. They're not in hibernation yet. And this time of year they'll bounce in and out until daytime temperatures are pretty cool. I got this tree stump here that I hollowed it out with the chainsaw to make it into like a pot. I planted some bulbs for ferns but they didn't come up. Now we got a raspberry plant starting in there and a little maple tree. So they'll take over next year. And there's a slug right there. So it wasn't something walking out here. It's so quiet that I was hearing leaves falling off the tree. The moon is so bright. Look at all the leaves here. They're all getting ready to fall. If we do get a frost next week, they'll be all over the ground. Good amount of leaves building up right here at the little drain. And there's a water skimmer. These are the guys that will eat the mosquitoes if they try to land in here. Good amount of leaves building up. I love these days when you walk through the grass and you just leave footprints in the dew. Look how pretty the leaves are on these raspberry bushes as they turn for the year. Uh, we got a frog. We got a second frog in the frog pond. Yeah, they're not hiding around the edges today. They're in the water. The water I can see even steaming because it was pretty warm earlier. Over to the big frog pond. A lot of nights you'll walk down here and the frogs will just go hopping in the water. But is it too cold for them to be out of the water? It might be. I don't see anyone hopping in. Earlier today a whole bunch of them were. I see some tadpoles in the water. Do we see any frogs? It might be cold enough that they're starting to bounce in and out of hibernation. I do see a lot of tadpoles. There's also some fish in here we accidentally moved when they were babies. I don't see any of them, but they're like now over four inches long, getting big. We're back to camp now and it has dropped down to, it looks like 48 degrees. It's getting late. Should probably go to sleep soon. Although I'm not really tired yet. Hopefully I'm able to sleep late into the morning. This thing is still smoking a little bit. Take a look in there. I haven't touched this thing in like four hours. It's a perfect night. Nice and cool, nice and quiet. I don't know how this clock's going to work, where we can possibly put it. I think one time we got it to fit on there. Yeah, that'll work. Looks good.
All right, everyone. Got to shut the door. It's just about time for bed. I do got some earplugs after all. I'm gonna try to go to sleep now. Can't wait to have breakfast in the morning. Good night, everyone. Good morning everyone, it's now about almost 11 o'clock. I slept a pretty good amount in here, it's nice and comfortable and it still kind of looks like nighttime in here. It's a blackout tent, blocks out the sun so well. Unfortunately the camera died halfway through my sleep because the power bank it was attached to it appears it was trickle charging it. It was barely, when I plugged it back in, it was going so slow. I swapped it out with the power bank for the light and then it started charging right away. I don't know why it's, it's that power bank. You no, know, this one, it has a problem or it's the charger. I'm guessing it's the power bank just charging it so slowly. I knew as soon as I turned it on, 
how is it still at 92%? It was charging so slowly. When I wake up, usually half of it would be gone running a whole night's sleep. Here are those peeps. There's at least two angry squirrels outside. It's getting warm out fast, all the way up to 66 degrees. All right, everyone, we're finally out of the tent. And in this direction, all I can hear is a angry squirrel and I could hear a bunch of birds chirping because in back of here is nothing but wilderness and logging. If you can see those clearings back there, maybe you can tell. The other direction, we got the noisy highway a couple hundred feet away. Last night it was so quiet, but that highway is gonna be nonstop noise because it's Sunday. There's a lot of weekend traffic that's just not gonna stop. That's how it is. It gets kind of quiet on weekdays, but that's about it. We're gonna go ahead and fire the stove back up and we're gonna cook brunch. It's a little too early, I guess, for breakfast. It's gonna be after noon when the food's done because this thing's gonna take like a half an hour to get going nicely where we can cook. And I brought out a nice cast iron pot, so today we're gonna cook some bacon. We're gonna cook some eggs. I actually haven't bought eggs in a while. I was surprised that egg crisis seems to be over. Eggs are back down. This right here I got for $1.98 at Walmart. Remember when eggs were like $6 plus a dozen? Not anymore. That's nice. Got some muffins, which I might not eat if I fill up on the other stuff. I'll maybe save that for another day. We got some eggnog. I tried the pumpkin eggnog last week. I actually like this one better. Sometimes I like to have protein shakes when I wake up because I'm the type of person who doesn't like to sit around and have breakfast, so I just have a protein shake and I'm out the door. And we got our frying pan. We'll cook the bacon first, and then when it's nice and greased up, we'll put the eggs in there afterwards. Nice heavy-duty pot. And no, the thing's not brand new. I just re-seasoned it. I basically re-season it every time we use it, which means cover with oil and bake, and it makes it black and it looks brand new again. What do we think happened to this tree? See that scar? It spirals around it, and then it opens up real big up top. what causes it to spiral around like that. And it goes all the way up inside it, if you can see that, that scar. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. This thing is doing awesome. I literally lit that fire three minutes ago and it's already burning clean. Look at that. It's already like a jet coming out of there. Can you hear the noise it's making, that pulsing noise? Or like a rumbling noise of the flames? It reminds me of the noise a diesel locomotive makes when you're near the train tracks. That rumbling sound especially when it's under a lot of tension. That's producing tons of heat. We got a few more sticks I'm gonna break up and put in there. Then we got those bigger rounds I found on the ground and that should produce enough heat to make breakfast. In the meantime, while we're waiting for this thing to get nice and hot, I'm gonna have a protein shake and then we're gonna try to take the tent down. It's already getting hot out. Today it's supposed to be like 85 degrees. Today's October 1st, I believe. Nice warm day in the fall. 
It's not nearly cold anymore. I got a little chilly last night and now I kind of woke up a little sweating in there. Look who I just found on the tent. A woolly bear caterpillar. It's so soft as it's crawling. I also just found a beetle. He was on my hand, but now he's crawling. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Did you see him? Did he fall off? I think he's still on me. No, there he is on the ground. It's the woolly bear again. All right, let's get this bacon out into the pan. Look at that, look at all that good bacon. Spread it around nice and evenly. And get it up onto the fire. Fire's nice and hot. And I think this really thick pan will help it cook more uniformly. Cause every time the flame goes up just for a second, it won't just burn right through it. It takes a while for the temperature to rise and fall. There's obviously a lot of it in here, so I have to keep stirring it, but it'll shrink. See, it doesn't all fit on the bottom of the pan, but it will. Just give it a couple minutes of cooking. We're gonna leave this unattended for a moment, so hopefully a bear or a squirrel doesn't try to steal it. I was gone less than five minutes and somebody's already stealing the bacon. There's a fly over there. All right, let's get it up there onto the burner and I gotta get more wood. It's not burning as hot as it once was. This area is cleaning up real fast. If you remember yesterday, there was piles of debris everywhere. Look how clean the campsite looks now that we're burning everything. If we camped here a couple more times, we could get all this debris cleaned up. Like you saw my flashback clip yesterday in the video. This woods used to be completely clean before a big storm about a year ago. Well, different debris. The forest floor was clean.
That is going real hot. It's gonna be hot even putting my hand over here to stir that, right? Yeah, super duper hot. We gotta pull this over to the edge. Now we can stir it. Trying not to splatter it on myself, which I am a little bit. Good, not too much of it is sticking. But this fire, this thing is extremely hot right now. All right, push it back out into the center. I'm sure in the top here, there's some way I could create a dampening system to control it. But the flames already cooled down a good bunch. And that smoke you just saw literally a minute ago has stopped. It's just because I just threw stuff in. Time to get up and stir it again. It's not running as hot now. But we're on our way. Ooh, just splash it on me. It's still got a ways to go. But it's looking good. Another 10 minutes later. Let's get back up here. Oh wow, it's starting to become nice and crispy now. Almost done. I don't like it super crispy. I still like it to be a little bit... Oh, well, we gotta pull it away. Didn't even notice at first because it's not super charged anymore, this thing. You gotta throw a little more wood on. Yeah, I'd say within 10 minutes that'll be good to eat. Look how dirty the fire is actually burning. Look at the smoke coming out the door. But everything is burned coming out the top. That's what I love about this stove. Uh, it's very hot, very hot. Wow, can't even get near the top of this thing. There's so much exhaust coming out of there. Wow. Okay, that bacon's done for me. Let's get this off. working this smells so good this crispy bacon today there's a slight breeze so lots of pine needles and debris are falling out of the trees oh man is that a slug on my plate that's literally a tiny slug nice and crispy look at that Let's crack an egg into that hot grease. Is that gonna explode since it's still very hot? I don't know. This cooked fast towards the end. I should have took it off five minutes earlier, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, look. He's crawling away. Look at it cooking right there. That it's so hot this pan. Whoa. Whoa, it's exploding. Ah, oh, hot oil. What do you guys think? I bet that'll taste good. I wonder if it's got enough heat to cook it here without even putting it back. That should be enough for eggs. I think it's literally enough to cook it right here. This thing is still that hot.
Yeah, it's basically already cooked. Look at that. Interesting. I'll give it a try. If it comes out horrible, I'll pour out most of the grease and put some normal eggs back on there. It's, yeah, this pan, it's too hot to touch still. We literally just cooked it right here. It's literally cooked already. That's fantastic. Bacon flavored scrambled egg. Look at that. You know how unhealthy this is going to be to eat? Well, it's cooked and it's still cooking. I'll give that a try, but I have a feeling it's going to be overwhelming the bacon flavor or just outright too greasy for me. So I might end up donating this to the local raccoon in the woods and making another one. That's really good. It's crunchy. Very dry, but not exactly burnt. It's been five minutes, by the way. The egg is still sizzling, and it appears to be completely cooked. Let's give that a try. Hot. It's like the greasiest egg I've ever had. Wow, that's hot. Not bad, but it's pretty gooey. Not bad at all. I want to see if I can put it back on and crisp it up. No. I said no. We're going to put it back, ow! We're going to put it back on for five minutes. This has been up here for like ten minutes now. It's just not crisping up like a normal egg, it being in so much grease, so... I, I just don't really like this. The texture is gooey, it's not crisping up. Wow. And I have this thing raging down there with so much heat. We'll give it a few more minutes, but I think I'm going to give it to the raccoon. We now got this thing burning so hot that it's actually dangerous to get near it. Look at the grease splattering all over the place. Wow, it just got me a little bit. It's, whoa, it's splattering like crazy. It's, ah, it's dangerous to get near it. Look at that. Imagine the whole tank just combusts. It could. The flames are up there. I don't know if I even feel safe getting it off there. It's just in the process of exploding. All right, we're going in. Uh, come on, come on. Got to get a good grip on it. It's not exploding as much as it was. Oh, look what it turned into. Ew. Yes. Ah! Oh my gosh, look at that. That's gross, look at the suds. Although it's kind of crispy now. Let's give it like 10 minutes to cool down and I'll, I'm gonna, I'll taste that. Although it does not look appealing anymore. You saw how much it was splashing all over the tank. I think the suds are like suppressing it so it can't splash anymore. All right everyone, it's been 10 minutes or so cooling down. Now that the suds are gone, we are left behind with some crispy crunchies. But how good are they going to be? Let's find out. It might be good because it smells really nice like bacon. I wish this was maple bacon. It would probably be even better. See how it's nice and crunchy there? I wonder what that'll taste like. It's honestly too hot to touch. Give it a few more minutes.
20 minutes now and it's still too hot to pick it up. Wow. I just cleaned up that tarp. I let it sit in the sun a few hours because it was very uh, covered in morning dew underneath it. Now this is very crunchy. It kind of reminds me now of the texture and everything of a, what do you call it? Hash brown. Exact texture of a hash brown. Wow. The way it's like burnt in little lines and put together. That's actually quite good. I'll eat most of that. Wow. That, that came out good. Letting it really sizzle like that. Uh, the ground's been drying out around this really hot tank and the fire jumped out. We got a spider friend right here. Oh, didn't even have to blow him off. I could only eat like half of the egg over there. I ate like half the bacon and I left the more burnt pieces. We'll go put those over at the pallet shack where I have a trail camera. We got raccoons there a couple times, and a moose walked by last week. The eggshells I'll leave out here. They can biodegrade, and animals will eat them for calcium. Everything else will go back into the kitchen. I'll probably sit out here a few more hours and just play with the fire, and then we'll be done for the night. Bacon scented exhaust. Oh, I just saw a monarch butterfly. As most of you guys know, bacon grease solidifies when it cools down. I probably should have given all the grease to the raccoons. Any animal basically will eat it. The squirrels, even birds will pick at it because they're all trying to fatten up for the winter. We got a trail camera right there. We'll see who comes. Most likely it'll be the raccoon. Although it's starting to get cold out. In the summer, coyotes never come near the house. But in the winter, it's usually a coyote that comes to get food. Beautiful red tree. Y'all remember that tree I showed you last night where we were listening to the worm in there chewing it away? Look what it does underneath the bark. It makes the bark separate whoever's in there doing that. See this? This bug, as it goes around the tree, it's kind of separating the bark, which makes it so it, nutrients can't come up in the tree anymore. And slowly, it's going to die. It's inevitable. The top of this tree looks actually pretty healthy, but it's inevitable. It's going gonna, it's gonna to die. All the dead branches you're seeing are just because, if you didn't know, trees reject branches that no longer get adequate sunlight. It's not worth it to the tree keeping them alive, so they all die off. And it's good for campers. You can just snap them off. It doesn't hurt the tree. Anyone ever been to a public campsite? You can't find a single tree with dead branches. It's so hard to actually collect things in a place where there's always someone camping. There's like a tornado of smoke going on in there right now.
Just put the chimney cap back on. Just about everything's put away, but I'm gonna show you guys what's on the camera from the last food I put out there at the little pallet shack in the woods. Then we'll set it back up, and in the future, if anything cool shows up, I'll show you what ate the bacon. I always get tiny little flies that go in my eyes. It's not a huge deal, but I just got a gigantic one that landed on my eyeball, and it lingered there for a few seconds, and I was trying to get it out, and I could just feel its legs crawling around. Ah. I'm pretty sure that's a bird tapping on the camera. So here we got our curious raccoon. This is the first guest of the pallet house. First animal I've got on camera going in there. First off, the raccoon is walking around the perimeter, checking it out, making sure it's safe. I think he just made an entire lap around it, checking it out because it's new to him. Just exploring. Look at those big glowing eyes. Now it looks like he finally got the confidence to start venturing inside. Nope, gonna eat a little bit. He's looking around, what does he hear? He hears something. Look how still he is. Now he's back to chewing. I believe on that night that was like maybe macaroni and cheese or something. There he's finally going inside. Now the raccoon, the raccoon will learn that I'm the one feeding him eventually. Because I'm sure he can smell me all over that entire thing I built. Still sniffing. He smells me all over that place. We camped in that about maybe two months back or so. Built completely out of pallets with a metal roof. Did he already eat it all? Because this can Oh my gosh, here comes a moose. A moose walking by. Wish he was a little further away. And here I come out, cleaning up the garbage from the raccoon. Everything is completely gone, and here I come out the next day, getting rid of some leftovers. That was after our Sloppy Joe video, if you guys saw that. Ate what I could, then this kind of went bad. It looked kind of gross the next day in the fridge, so I brought it outside. And here comes a squirrel coming to eat some of the Sloppy Joe chunks. Oh, he's got scared back up the tree. And here I come today with Thomas. today's bacon. Most we will see what raccoon. comes to eat that. Although it's starting to get cold out. In the summer, coyotes never come near the house. And here we are at the bridge camera. We have some interesting friends. Look all the way over to the right. Those are moose antlers. Here comes the moose. Too bad he's not further away. That's a big moose. Sniffing around. I wonder if this is the same moose that walked by the other camera. I'm gonna have to look at those dates. Big moose. Too bad he didn't walk across the bridge. Although maybe he's too big, maybe he would have broken the bridge. But this camera has some really cool friends that I'm about to show you in the next five minutes. This is me walking a dog around the loop in the woods. The grass grew in really good around the pond. Oh, we have a bear friend. I haven't checked this camera in like two months. I didn't know the bear was still coming around. And there's multiple bears. This is a little bear. You're going to see a really big bear in just a minute. A lot of animals come here. That little pool of water attracts them. And here we got a deer. Coming to check out the water source. I wonder if he smells I put some deer attractant corn spray. And there's a bunch of leftover popcorn from our popcorn testing video. We cooked up like a dozen different types of corn. 
to see if they would taste any different. They're all basically the same, but they had slight off. Some of them were off. Some of them were sweeter than others, stuff like that. And look who showed up to eat the popcorn in the middle of the night. It's a giant bear. It looks like he's getting a drink first. He hasn't touched the corn yet. He's just sniffing the bridge. And there he goes to eat the corn. There he is chewing the corn and staring at the camera. He noticed he's caught on camera, so he's going to try to walk away now. Oh, he's scratching. And here we go in the morning. A smaller bear. The sun's about to come up. Infrared hasn't quite shut down yet. Looks kind of cool. It's almost daybreak, but it's still running in black and white. The bear doesn't seem super interested in the corn. That big fella would, should have been able to eat it all. Now the infrared finally shut off. Now we got some color going on. This bear looks really skinny compared to the big fat one that was there last night. And here we got a raccoon. Just a single raccoon, probably the same one that we saw over at the pallet house in the last camera's footage. Even when there's no food put out at these locations, it's the water source. I've seen raccoons over the years come here just to take drinks and wash their hands off in the water. That little pool attracts a lot of things. Sometimes there's frogs in there, and I didn't put them there. They just come naturally. Water beetles, water skimmers come there naturally. Many different animals I've seen come by here just to take a drink. And look who it is. Here comes the bear again. The bear making his rounds. But I think it's been like an entire, it's been at least a month since we've seen the bear on the cameras. So that's why we didn't have a visitor from this guy last night camping, cooking all that delicious food. Although it's a black bear, they're easy to scare away. What's he doing, eating the grass? Yeah, he's literally eating the grass or something growing on that hill. Just took some bites out of it. I love how most of the animals use the bridge. Most of the animals use my trail because the rest of the woods is just a mess. It's easier to walk there. And look at that. A little bobcat. I don't think that was a lynx. I think it was a bobcat because of the short fur, right? Yeah, they use my trails because it's the easiest place to walk. Look at all the debris around the rest of the woods. Same reason in the winter you'll have a lot more animals walking in the road. It's easier than walking through that deep snow. There we got a coyote going by. The camera shifted a little bit. Maybe the wind or some animal brushing against it. Maybe the moose did it. I don't know. That's how a trail camera works. You program it so it's on, then off. Because you don't want it running constantly, it'll burn the battery out or fill up the memory. You want it to capture an animal, and then you want it to shut down for a little while, and turn back on. You don't want it constantly on, because some animals sit there for hours, setting it off repeatedly. Right now we got like a storm going on, a bunch of things falling out of the trees. Got a good amount of wind going on. That's what's moving around the camera. A windy, stormy night going on. There we got the raccoon back again. And this was only six days ago. We're going to go put this trail camera right back up in a few minutes. It's still got half a charge. Not going to charge the battery. I just drained the memory card. We're going to stick the card right back in and turn it on. I hope these videos of the animals were interesting. Time to go put the memory cards back in. Let's go to those cameras. This was a perfect flat spot for that tent. I almost wanted to sleep out here a second night. I got a very good night's sleep out here. Very comfortable. Perfect temperature. Also, the sun was, un was not able to wake me up. Usually when you're camping, the sun, daybreak, is what wakes you up. But with that blackout tent, I had zero problems. The times I've used it before were in the dead of winter, and the cold literally woke me up. So right here we got the camera. So we're just going to stick the card in there. Like that. Power on. It allows you with the screen to look at what's on it. You don't have to pull it out. Hit start. 
gives you 30 seconds to walk away before it starts turning on make sure the aim is good towards that bridge and there we go and I have a lesser used trail here which makes our way to the pallet house you can see the pallet house up there in the distance anybody can get their property certified as an animal habitat you just have to provide food shelter and water that can mean as little as a bird bath a bird feeder and a birdhouse and we also got those big brown signs I was able to get from the state and the second camera is on and ready to go and we're done with the fire for today this will probably be hot a couple more hours it'll completely burn down and then we'll come out with a shovel maybe next week and just spread that ash around Last winter, we lost over 50 trees in one night. It was so wet out and raining, the ground was so soft. Then a big wind came through and it just knocked over so many trees here. But the area is recovering nice. We cleared as much as we can because when there's debris all over the ground, layers and layers of it, nothing can grow for a long time until it rots. So we put it all into logs that over time will be hauled back to the house with that wagon. That wagon, this might be its last year. I keep putting band-aid fixes on, but everything's worn out from moving such heavy things through the woods. Now, this was all put into piles. It was chopped up into little pieces like I was showing earlier. You can just take handfuls of this and load it into a little stove. Like, this is not that far away from camp. This could be used if we ever needed that much. But we made a bunch of clear areas. See, there's already trees, which will really take off the next year. Little seedlings berry bushes usually clearings in the wild like this it'll turn into berries for a while until the little trees shade them out and just kill them all off back there was a blowdown maybe five eight years ago and look at all the tiny little trees starting to grow in it's recovered perfectly and it looks beautiful in the winter time i always put corn out for the turkeys and deer and i put cameras out here i guess they missed some of it there's a couple pieces of corn. Wow, it actually grew a tiny little cob and there's actual corn in there. That's so cool. Well, that's from feeding the wild turkeys. I will go through a couple 50 pound bags of food every year. I just walk all the trails, sprinkling it, making trails and it leads them all back to the house. It's cool to watch them. See this whole area is beautiful moss and trees. It's recovering nicely. This was a really wet year, and on wet years, the moss really takes off, and it's able to climb up all this debris and help break it and crush it down. Wet years are so beneficial. But this area here, with all these trees down, this area I haven't cleared yet, it's like a dead spot. Nothing is going to be able to grow up through that until we clear it, or at least break it down where little seedlings can pop up through. It's also a giant fire hazard on a dry year. All right, everyone, we're back in the house where I'm going to clean all this stuff off. Now, a pan like this, you really only have to clean the inside. See how it's greasy? I can simply, with a paper towel, just wipe all that out. The next time it heats up, the grease will just self-season it. Bacon grease is great for self-seasoning it. Because I put it on a fire, the entire backside is kind of destroyed from the extreme heat. And this thing will start rusting. So today, it doesn't matter what we clean it with. I'm just going to clean it all off with dish detergent, which usually you don't want to use because it breaks down the oils and causes it to rust. But we're going to completely re-season it. What that means is wipe down all the grease, clean it as best as we can, and then with a cloth, rub it down with basically any kind of cooking oil will work. Some are better than others. And then you bake it in the oven at about 350 degrees. And about an hour later, you can put a second coat of seasoning on. I only do one coat since I destroy it on fire so often. And why don't I just let it rust on the outside? Because I don't always use it on an open flame. Sometimes I'll use it on an actual wood stove that I don't want to get all rusty because I take care of my wood stoves and I don't want them to become super rusty. So we're just going to quickly clean this up and make it look brand new once again. So one of the first things I do is 
I wait until the water gets really hot. Then I fill this sink up a couple inches of hot water. And then I put this in there without getting water inside. It will melt it all down so I can wipe it out. I don't want all that grease in my pipes and septic tank. Starting to melt. So we can start trying to wipe it out of there. See how it wipes off pretty easily now? It's not completely melted, but yeah, it was melted enough to get it all off. It's better not to have all that grease in your pipes. Now the little bit of residue, oh well. We that can send that down. This is actually my third time cleaning the back of this. The first time I did it, my hand was completely black. It was so dirty from soot. But I accidentally didn't film it. But that's okay. So now that we completely cleaned it up, now we just go ahead, fill it up with hot water. The entire pan is already hot. We just simply take it out like this, wipe it out. Wow, I did a good job cleaning it. I thought I was actually gonna ruin the towel by touching this. Put it in hot water, cause let's sit here. In a minute, it'll be completely dry. Pour a good amount of oil in there. Take an old cloth, a paper towel, even the high quality paper towels seem to leave debris behind. I just put a lot because I expect this piece of cloth to soak a lot up. But you see how we put it around? See how it covered up all the imperfections we could see just a moment ago? Looks pretty good. Doesn't that look nice? Now we go around back. Yeah, this shirt soaked up a good amount of it. As long as we can cover it once, like this, it's really good. If you put a very thick layer of oil, it can break and chip off pretty easily. So it's better to do a couple thin layers baking in between. But if you're someone like me who destroys the season, whether it's from cutting inside it or just overheating it like I do, it's good to just do a couple layers like that. After being in here almost an hour, the pan looks awesome again. I built this little chair when we knocked down this dead tree. It's like a slight reclining chair. And I'm now realizing it's very moist what I'm sitting in. And I hope today's video was interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day.